way that is. This is the kind of thing we're looking at right there. You'd be amazed, no chalk. I actually drew a chalk line because I needed some stuff done. That tornado didn't call that chalk. What do you think? This base. Must have night vision too. Because <laughs> it was at night. Absolutely. So I think it's all good. But Tim, as you do stuff, if you want to talk. Well, I'm taking a look at the seat here, the steel seat that's been welded to a plate here. And this is where the steel joist, the end of the steel joist went ahead and sat in here. So this little angle piece, that's from the joist itself. It tore the weld here on this side. And so the joist then flew. And as you can see behind me, they are fought and flew all the way over and across the interstate. Can you reset it? Yeah. So this is a, a, a tie rod here, anchor, that goes in and ties down what's called a nailer. And the nailer here, you can see his anchor quite down very well, but then the roof is just sitting over that and adhered to that. Looks like it's just kind of glued on. Tim, what's your thoughts on this building? Well, it's a typical metal building. Uh, it's very economically constructed, and so uh, it doesn't have much lateral resistance. It fails pretty quickly. It actually overturns about its base. It popped those bolts right in half. You can see the actually cut cone fracture there. It's a pure tensile failure, and this is what happens with these big span buildings that just can't handle the wind load. They just kind of go over and the whole thing collapses. Okay, we've, we've arrived in Sulphur, Oklahoma, where we're going to begin our survey here. Tim, what, what's your thoughts just on initially seeing Sulphur, and uh, what's your preliminary thoughts here? Well, we've got to look at specific buildings here that have collapsed, like the one behind me right now. And we're going to see how they were built, and then get, come up with a rating of the wind speed and see what the failures were. Pretty flimsy. Walk down. Look at the uh so what he's doing here is he's talking about the double width here, triple width of the brick. Yeah, the load bearing wall was this wall in the front right here. And these steel trusses were actually resting on top of there. You can see that they were slotted into the masonry. And the loss of this wall well, caused the loss of the roof. The roof just came on down. Gravity came straight down. Just, just a simple collapse is what it was. Okay, we've come over to 3rd and Broadway, which is the center of downtown. And this is one of the buildings we're looking at. And Tim is investigating what is going on with the walls, the roof, how the roof come in, the winds that are associated with that. And as he continues to investigate, we will continue to have more information. It's a forensic science, right? So. Yeah. I'm like a cop. So he's a cop in, a, in the engineering and meteorology field. So he's investigating why this happened and why these buildings failed. I know the safety rules say, you know, get to lowest floor in a hallway, maybe under a staircase or something. But it, those rules are not absolute. There are exceptions to those rules. And, and one of them is this one here where we have all this masonry that fell in. If you were here hiding from the shelter, you'd be hurt by all that falling masonry. So not every hallway, every shelter is, is a safe place to be. It all depends on what's over your head. So this is a, a house or a building 
that's wood frame. And what we look for is to see how it's connected here. We look all the way up and down, we don't see very much at all. And over here we see one nail. That's in. Let me see another one. And then this one here, they just bent it. They didn't quite get through it. So this house is not very built very well. And therefore, although it's an EF4 candidate, it's going to come down because it's not built very well. So right now what Tim's doing, he's looking for specific indicators because this is our closest indicator on the building that could place this tornado at an EF4 in sulfur. Uh, right now he's doing the forensic part, trying to put those walls together, trying to put that roof together. How did this building come down and why did this building come down? So right now that's what Tim's doing. He's going piece by piece around this building trying to figure out exactly what was going on with this building. As you can see, there's nothing left of it but the floor. So that's what intrigues Tim and the National Weather Service, why this could be an EF4, but they've got to have those damage indicators that does make that an EF4. So far, that's what we're investigating.